how can I master self-control and self-trust? This is Ask a Therapist. Let's dive in, Mended Light. All right, I'm gonna get a little autobiographical on this one, folks. So the Ask the Therapist uh, videos, you sound off in the comments things you want me to talk about, and the question today is, how do I master self-control and self-trust? Uh, I wanna talk about me for a little bit because this question cut me right to my heart because this is like my greatest struggle in life, this, this exact question, self-control and self-trust. Uh, from, a, from a child, uh, I was picked on and bullied a lot. And I would come home, uh, I was overweight, and the kids would make fun of me and call me Butterball. And I'd come home crying about the kids calling me fat, and my mom would comfort me with <laughs> chocolate chip cookies that she had just baked, right? She'd like, tell me what happened. I'm like, the kids would say I'm so fat. <laughs> and it's just so mean. <laughs> and I'd just chug the whole milk, you know, and I'd grab the half and half if I could find it. Anyways, uh, I started to eat my feelings. And I started to develop the habit. And this isn't on her, this is on me. I started to develop the habit of escaping from my problems through vices, right? Which continue like starting in my teenage years, uh, a wrestle with pornography. We've talked about this in other videos. Uh, you know, for some people, the, the their personal values, there's nothing wrong with pornography. Me personally, um, it's not the it's not the nudity or the sex. I'm not especially prude, you know. Bodies are bodies, and sex is sex. And I can talk about sex, and I can even have sex. I'm a big fan. Uh, but my issue with pornography is how often um, the relationships are unhealthy, and the people are objectified, right? And I I personally didn't like how I felt watching it because it goes against those core values of mine, which is to see people as whole people. And, um, and to promote healthy relationships. But I lack self-control in that. So to the point of the question, how do you master self-control? I'm using the pornography example and the food example because while I've conquered pornography, like I still, I still eat my feelings. It's still something that I, that I do. And so I'm still, I'm learning to master that self-control, but it comes down to understanding your vices. What are they there to treat, right? Uh, I used to watch the show 24, Jack Bauer. He's a counterintelligence agent. He's a counterterrorist agent, rather. And he develops a drug habit undercover so that they think that he's part of a drug cartel. And the bad guy is saying, what, is, what does the heroin make go away, Jack? You know, what, are you, what pain are you trying to, to numb? Because it's not the substance you're addicted to, it's the escape. And, uh, you know, and Jack carried a lot of guilt for a lot of different things. And in my case, with compulsive eating and with the watching of pornography, it, it wasn't even about the taste of the food or the, the pleasurable images. It was about escaping something. It was about making something go away for even just a little while. Uh, sometimes it's been self-loathing. A lot of times it's been self-loathing. Uh, other times it's been insecurity, fear about the future, uh, fear about my own inability to measure up to my own expectations, the expectations of others, or the responsibilities that I have taken on myself. Self-mastery implies the mastery of negative habits and seizing hold of good ones and, and being in control of yourself and being in control of your life. And for me, the first step to self-mastery, honestly, was understanding what the phrase love yourself really means. We hear it thrown around a lot. We hear it thrown around so much, love yourself, be good to yourself, be gentle with yourself. We hear it so much that it's become kind of cliche. It's become a platitude and it's lost its meaning. And I always saw self-love to the point of self-mastery and, and self-trust. Like self-love is essential for that. I always saw self-love as a, a weak sauce consolation prize. <laughs> I saw it as love yourself because no one else is gonna, <laughs> right? Because if everyone else actually knew you, they wouldn't love you. 
And I had a paradigm shift. Past three years of my life, I've been doing a lot of self-work. Um, you know, Alicia and I have talked before in some of the videos about struggles that we've had in our marriage, and a lot of those have come from me being really insecure and not trusting myself, wanting to be rescued, wanting to be taken care of, feeling confident in my areas of strength and wanting to just play there and work there and live there and let her or let other people take care of me in these other ways because I didn't trust myself to take care of me. I, I, I had fears and doubts about what I was able to learn, what I was able to do. And self-love helped me out of that. Self-love helped me to realize that my capacity to learn and to grow and to love and to take ownership and to make changes is infinite. And I had put a limit on it out of fear. Coming to trust myself meant starting to do the things that were hard for me and to learn how to do them and to know where I could turn to learn how to do them and then to work at it and stumble and fall and get up and keep going and try again. And then weaknesses turned into strengths. And that started to give me self-trust that, oh, I can do hard things. I can do the things I'm scared to do. And self-mastery, letting go of, of the bad habits. I've been eating better. This visit, a lot of, quite a few people have told me that I'm looking like I'm fitter than I have in a while. And that comes down simply to replacing the negative habits with positive ones, right? Back to Jack Bauer on 24, why do you take the drugs, Jack? What are you trying to make go away? What are you trying to dull? What are you trying to escape? And I'd say, okay, if I'm dealing with feeling sad, if I'm dealing with not liking myself, if I'm dealing with feeling lonely, um, what healthy replacement can I substitute for what I've been turning to? And here's the thing about healthy replacements. It's true with food and it's true with everything else. Usually the unhealthy version is more exciting. That's why we do it. <laughs> I once, had, I once said to a friend about baby carrots, I said, uh, baby carrots are nature's Cheetos. And my friend says, well, then nature loses. <laughs> um, sometimes the healthy replacements uh, aren't as exciting, but they are fulfilling. You know, they are nourishing. You can look yourself in the eye. So for me, like key to overcoming pornography was exercise. It was, I need a release and I need to feel good. And I would start doing that instead. And if I felt sad, instead of eating a bunch of crap food, I started to really get back into music. Love music. Everyone knows that I love movies, but I have a big music thing. <laughs> and music is, is much healthier for me than junk food. You know, and I still get, I still get that dopamine release where I'm feeling better, where I'm feeling good. So self-mastery requires replacing negative habits with positive ones that give you a similar result, right? In, in dealing with whatever it is that you're feeling, whatever it is that you're trying to treat. Self-trust comes from trying the hard things, recognizing that failure is gonna be part of that process and embracing that instead of fearing it. So that when you fail, it's like, instead of, oh, I'm a loser, I shouldn't have even tried, I should never have tried. You say, yeah, I knew this was gonna happen. It's part of the journey. This is a learning opportunity so I can do it better next time. And key for both self-mastery and self-trust for me have been self-love. Um, seeing that my capacity to do good is so much greater than I had thought that I had presumed. <sighs> Allowing other people to love me instead of doubting it. Believing that I'm worthy of it. Believing that my mistakes don't define me, right? That there, it's just grist for the mill of growth if I let it be. And recognizing that the acceptance and the belonging and the approval that I craved from other people, 
I could give it to myself and that it wasn't a consolation prize. It was actually the foundation of everything. To look in the mirror and say, I like you. I like, I like that guy, you know? I didn't have that for decades of my life. It's only in recent years that I've, I've really started to tap into it. I was having dinner with a friend the other day and he told me just how much he likes me. Uh, he says, I've always liked you, you're my friend, but I like you even more now. He says, you've got a confidence. And I said, yeah, that confidence came from making a lot of mistakes and then doing everything I could to make them right, you know? And that confidence comes from dedicating myself to be a better version of me. So, self-mastery, self-trust, these are my stray thoughts and observations. I hope you found this helpful. So folks, if you enjoyed this, I invite you to check out That Jackass Cheated, Should You Be Done? That's another Ask a Therapist uh, question for you. Tell me about your journey uh, of self-mastery and self-trust. You know, how's that coming? Uh, what have you learned along the way? What are you struggling with? And I encourage you to, to share that below and as you see each other's comments to compassionately respond to one another and engage with one another because part of what we're building here is meant with Meta Light. Alicia and I only have so much time and energy. We're only two people. But this community of light menders, as I like to call them, you can be there for each other in a really powerful and profound way. So please sound off in the comments below. But if you need more support, go to mendedlight.com. You can learn about our membership site. Uh, where we do live Q and A's, uh, live book club events online, virtual, where we're reading the same book with, with all of our light menders together. Uh, I have online courses that I've created every month, new courses coming out on different subjects for your mental health, for your relationships, things like that. And if you need support from one of our team, you can, you can schedule a complimentary 15 minute consultation. Until next time, folks, keep shining. We need your light. Go to mendedlight.com. 